We start with the number one rule for every Roma. Wear the goddamn Roma item. This is one problem that exists since I started to play ML. And to my surprise, it even happens in the higher mythic ranks. If you are the Roma and doesn't use the Roma item, you already fail at your job. The only way that you're allowed to not buy the Roma item right at the start of a game is when you and the guy on the XP lane agree to clear the first wave together. So both of you are on level 2 after the first wave. But only do that if the XP lane guy is cool with it. When you say something like, Uh, I got Rome at level 4. No, you fail at your job. You're just helping the enemies with it. You delay the farm of your allies and also need much longer to benefit from the Rome effect. So no, don't be that kind of Roma, please. I hope that was clear enough. By the way, one thing I have to do. Hello, my friends. That's tradition. Another tradition that I want to introduce is you using your full combo on the like button. So this video can spread to more ML players and we're all blessed with many better teammates. Let's get into the draft pick phase quickly. Because there are things that you need to know. According to the vote I've made, over 75% think that S5 should pick the tank. That was just a joke vote, obviously. But that S5 should pick the tank is not entirely wrong, you know? If the whole enemy's team, or at least a big part of it has been picked already, you can pick a Roma that is a really good counter to the enemy. And by the way, I'm talking about Roma, not tanks. Most Romas are tanks, but there are many heroes who are very good Romas without being tanks. Such as Jawhead, Cho, Matilda, Rafaela, Estes, Angela or Natalia. Now, let's start at the beginning of the match. If you are the Roma, you either invade the enemy's jungle and try to reset the jungler's buff or you defend the jungler's buff against the enemy's Roma. This is especially important if either jungler is blue buff dependent, for example Fanny or Ling. Next, be the ice for your team by camping in bushes. This helps your jungler much more than damaging the jungle creeps. Unless your hero have high early game damage, like Hylos for example. Another case where you might need to help damaging the creep is when your jungler has a very low damage output in the early game. Like when you have a marksman as jungler. From this you already may realize that your job as a roamer is not to babysit the marksman on the golden lane, but to rotate non-stop, ideally together with your mid laner and the jungler, to ultimately support all of your allies together. If someone picks a marksman, that player must be smart enough to survive in the early game. We will talk about marksmen in particular in another video as well. If your counterpart stays on the gold lane though, your priority should be rotating to that lane. The enemy's marksmen shouldn't start to become very fat. You also need a very special mindset as Roma. You're almost all of the time the one that jumps first into a fight. So dying is a natural part of your role. The only thing that is important here is how many enemies could you drag with you down? If you died, but your teammates could kill three enemies because of it, you did an awesome job and should be happy about it. Another thing you need to have in mind are the medals. Almost all players rate their game depending on which medal they get. Unfortunately, this system is rewarding those heroes who are able to get kills and are not dying frequently. So exactly those things that a Roma doesn't have. You will end up most of the time with a silver or maximum a gold medal. Even if you were the real MVP of the game. Never be bothered about the medals. They doesn't mean anything. The only thing that is really important is if you won or lost the match. Also as a Roma, you are easily getting blamed by new players when they died. And yes, I consider most people who blame the Roma for their death as noob. A Roma is not there to babysit anyone. So if you were out of position and the Roma didn't suicide together with you, it's 100% on you and not on the Roma. That also means don't try to save a teammate that jumps into a 1v5. When you try to save him alone, you will just suicide as well. And that doesn't help anybody. Another thing I see many Romas do is taking unnecessary damage. Just because they can take a lot. You need every single HP because it can make a big difference in a gank where you should try to be as present as possible so your teammates can take down the enemy. Now let's talk about bushes because they are your best friend. The most obvious thing for you is to camp in the right bushes. Just camping in any bush is not going to help you. You need to camp in the bushes that gives your teammate vision and from where you can engage from. Let's say in the early game on the side lane, you have to choose a bush to camp in because your allies want to gank this lane soon. Which bush is a good option and why? These two bushes are completely useless for that. You can't give any vision 
and engaging from here is also not ideal. This bush is good to engage, but you can't give your team any vision from here. If the enemy approaches from the jungle area, you will not realize it until it's too late. So the only options you have left are these two bushes. From here, you can engage very well and give vision to your teammates of the whole area. So none of them can be surprised, unless they completely ignore the minimap, but that's a topic for another video. This bush is also very promising. You can give even further vision of the area and many inexperienced players, especially marksmen, tend to get the small jungle camp here. So a perfect chance for an ambush. I love to use this bush for a quick ambush, but be careful. If you have no backup and the enemies rotates to the side lane, it can horribly back it can horribly backfire at you. Your turret is really far away, so don't be too reckless. Other good bushes to camp in are these in the turtle area, the ones next to the buff when they are up and the ones near to the enemy's base in the late game. Generally speaking though, all bushes are useful in one or another way and you should always use them as a Roma to give your team vision or to set ambushes. If you rotate with your allies, it is also your job to be the first one who enters a bush. There could be three enemies in it and you really don't want that your squishy allies are the first who get attacked. If they blast their three holes into your face and you die, fine, but at least your allies are still alive and can continue farming, so your team is not falling behind that much. The next very important thing is the correct engage. If you land a perfect 5 man ult, but none of your teammates is ready to fight, it's a completely wasted engage and you just suicided. You always need to make sure that your teammates are ready to fight. When you play with randoms, it can be really difficult. You don't really know how they behave, because some of them are just sleeping while playing or maybe busy watching TV, you never know. So you need to know their behavior ASAP, so you can adjust to it. I would always use a launch attack ping and wait a few seconds before engaging so your teammates are really ready. If they spam the retreat button though, then you should retreat, retreat, retreat. Even when you are in the perfect position, it still makes no sense to engage if your teammates aren't ready. Also, check the little green symbol on the pictures up here. That tells you if the ults are ready or not. If you have AOE CC abilities, you should make sure to actually hit multiple enemies with your engage. Just hitting one enemy is most of the time not enough to call it a good engage. Also, focus the enemies that deal damage and not the enemy's tank. When you can take out the enemies that can deal damage, your teammates easily can wipe out the whole enemy's team and you can easily win the game. That doesn't mean completely ignoring the enemy's tank by the way. This is a misconception many players have. When I say don't blast your ult mindlessly into the face of the tank, I mean it because it's much better to use it on a squishy hero that you can actually kill. But when there is a chance to kill the enemy's tank because he messed up, do it. If you manage to kill the tank and have your ult still available, you have the perfect opportunity to wipe out the whole enemy's team because they don't have the frontliner anymore. Just be careful to not get surprised by the other enemies while you try to beat them down. Be smart. And talking about smart, building the right items is one of the most important things for Aroma. You really need to know which items you have to build against which enemy. For example, building physical defensive items, despite the majority of the enemies deal magic damage, is the worst thing you can do. This will lead you to be a squishy tank and nobody needs that. I keep it short here and recommend my item guide series for it, so you learn how each and every item of the game works. Another thing that roamers need to do is zoning out the area when your team is taking an objective. For example, when your team is taking the turtle, you don't need to tank the damage for them. You better non-stop check the bushes around the area where the enemies could come from. If they come, delay the engage to buy your team enough time to take the objective. The same goes when your team is taking down the turret. Secure the area so your enemy cannot hit you with an ambush. If both roamers have this mindset, it can lead to very funny situations where both always end up next to each other and start to spam remotes and the recall button. Roma mains are something else and mostly the nicest people you can find in the game. Another nice thing will be if you're going to check out the whole rank up guy playlist now or if you like my work, joining my Patreon. A huge shout out go to Twisted J, Mist and Corbear. Have a great day guys!